Part 1 Getting to Know You Lesson 1 Introducing People 1. Hello, David. Nice to see you again. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Very well, thanks. David, do you know Yang Chong? Yang Chong, this is David Kennett. He's our project director in Vietnam. Pleased to meet you, Yang Chong. How do you do, Mr. Kennett? 2. Excuse me, Dr. Brown. Can I introduce you to Professor Polsky from Macedonia? Anna, this is Dr. Harold Brown. He works in Rwanda. How do you do? How do you do, Dr. Brown? 3. Hello, Sharon. How are things with you? OK, thanks, Hilary. Oh, this is Martin. He's my son. Martin, this is Hilary, my friend from Manchester. Hi. Hello, Martin. Lesson 2. What do you do every day? I do the same things every day. I wake up at 7, but I stay in bed until 7.15. Then I get up and have a shower. That really wakes me up. I get dressed and then I have breakfast, some toast and a cup of coffee. I leave the house at 8.30 and walk to the bus stop. I go to work by bus. I start work at about 9 and I finish work at 5 or 6. In the evening, I have dinner and watch television or play on the computer. I am usually in bed by 11. Lesson 3 Talk about your family. I live with my mother and my father and my two brothers. They are called Owen and David. Owen is 20 and he's at university. David is 16 and he's at school, like me. I have two grandmothers and one grandfather. My other grandfather is dead. I have one uncle and one aunt. My aunt Janet is my mother's sister. They have two daughters. Rosa is 10 and Gemma is 14, like me. They are my cousins. Lesson 4 What can you do? 1. What do you do? I'm a maths teacher. Have you got a university degree? Yes, I've got a degree in maths and a PGCE. A PGCE? What's that? It's a postgraduate certificate in education. It means I can teach. So you teach maths? Yes, I teach maths in a secondary school. 2. What skills have you got? Well, I can drive. I've got a PSV licence. What's that? It's a public service vehicle licence. It means I can drive big vehicles with passengers. You have to take a special test to get the licence. So what do you do for a living? I'm a bus driver. 3. What do you do? I work in the tourist industry. I'm a travel representative. Do you need paper qualifications for that? No, but it helps if you can speak a foreign language. Can you? Yes, I can speak Spanish and Italian. And English? Of course. 4. What's your job in this company? I'm a personal secretary. I work for one of the directors. What do you do? Oh, I answer the telephone, make appointments for my boss, write letters, and prepare reports. 
Can you use a computer? Of course. I've also got an advanced certificate in office management. 5. What skills have you got? I can design and make beautiful clothes. I'm a fashion designer. Do you need any qualifications for that? Well, I've got a diploma from the London College of Fashion, but experience is very important in the fashion business. You learn on the job, really. Part 2 on the move Lesson 1 Giving directions 1. Excuse me, where are the toilets? Oh, they're over there on the right. I see. Thank you. 2. Can you tell me where the cinema is, please? Yes, it's in the square. Just go straight on for about 200 metres and you'll see it in front of you. 3. Excuse me, can you tell me where East Street is? Of course. Just turn left at the next set of traffic lights. That's East Street. Oh, thank you. 4. Excuse me, where's the tourist information office? Let me see. Ah, yes. Go straight on at the traffic lights. You can't miss it. Thanks. 5. Excuse me, where's the nearest public telephone? Ah, it's in the post office. It's on your left as you go in. Ah, thanks. 6. Excuse me, do you know where the Blue Parrot Cafe is? Yes. Turn right at the next corner and you'll see the sign. Great. Thanks. Telling the time. 1. Excuse me, what time is the bus to Oxford? The next one leaves at 9 o'clock. And when does it get there? It arrives at half past 10. That's great. Thank you. 2. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, please. When does the train for Paris leave? It departs from Platform 6 at half past 11. And when does it arrive? Four o'clock in the afternoon. OK, thank you. 3. Excuse me, what time is the next flight to Amsterdam? The next one is at 12.30. And it arrives in Amsterdam at quarter to two. That sounds fine. Thank you. Lesson 3. What are you going to do? Track 1. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Tim. Are you going to Anita's party on Friday? Of course. All the people from work are going. Great. I'm going too. What about Saturday? Do you want to play tennis? No, sorry. I'm taking the cat to the vet in the morning. What about the afternoon? No. I'm going to town to buy some clothes. Sunday? Sunday is fine. Great. Is three o'clock OK? Three is perfect. OK. I must go now. Bye. Bye, Tim. Track two. One. I am going to a concert next week. There's a wonderful programme with songs from my favourite operas. Two. We are going to Australia next month. We are visiting my son. He lives in Sydney. Three. We are going to the art gallery this morning and in the afternoon we are shopping. Four. He is playing in a tennis tournament all day tomorrow. Five. They are travelling to Bangkok on Sunday. We are seeing them off. Their flight leaves at six o'clock.
Lesson four. Asking about places. One. Excuse me, where's the science museum? Oh, take the second turning on your left, and it's about two hundred meters ahead, on the right-hand side of the street. Thank you. Two. When does the museum open? We open at ten from Monday to Saturday, but on Sunday we don't open until two o'clock. So it's ten o'clock today. Yes, that's right. Ah, thank you. Three. How much does it cost to get into the gallery? Oh, it's free. Free? Yes, you don't have to pay to get in. Great. Thanks. Four. Excuse me, when does the concert start? The doors open at seven o'clock. You must be in your seat by seven twenty-five because the concert starts at seven thirty. Oh, thank you. Five. Can you tell me how to get to the antiques market? Yes, it's in the centre of town. Take a number twenty-two bus and get off at the town hall. Okay, thank you. Six. How much are tickets for the tour of the castle? They are four pounds for adults and two pounds for children under fourteen. And for students? Student tickets are half price, two pounds. Thanks. Lesson five. Finding out about cities. Excuse me, can I ask where you are from? Of course. I'm from Edinburgh. Can you spell that for me, please? Yes, it's E D I N B U R G H. Thank you. And where is Edinburgh? It's in Scotland. It's the capital. Scotland. That's to the north of England, isn't it? Yes. Edinburgh's about four hundred miles to the north of London. And is Edinburgh very big? Quite big. It has a population of about five hundred thousand. I see. Five hundred thousand. I think that's a lot. Are there lots of tourists in Edinburgh? Oh yes. It's a great city for tourists. It's very beautiful. The castle is our most famous tourist attraction. And of course, there's the festival. The festival? Yes. Every summer there is a festival of art, music, theatre, everything. Thousands of tourists come to see that. I must visit. How can I get there from London? Well, you can fly to Edinburgh Airport, or you can drive. But it's a long way, and it takes a long time. My favourite is to go by train. It's relaxing, and you see the whole country. That's great. Thank you very much. Lesson six. Dealing with travel situations. One. Is the fifteen thirty to Buffalo running? Let me see. Yes, but there's a forty-five minute delay. What time does it get to Buffalo? It's due in Buffalo at seventeen ten. Thank you. Two. Excuse me, can you help me, please? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I, I want a hotel in central London. Is that just for one night? Yes, it is. Let's have a look. The Cavendish in Bryanston Square has a double room available at ninety-five pounds a night. Well, that sounds okay. Where is Bryanston Square? Three. Hello, is that the Belmont Conference Center? Yes. How can I help? I have a meeting in room one hundred and twelve with Mr. Curtis. Unfortunately, my train is delayed, so I'm going to be late. Room one hundred and twelve. Hold on a moment. I'm putting you through. Thanks. Four. Where to, madam? The airport, please. 
I'm running a bit late. Now then, what time's your flight? Half past eleven. I'm sure I'm going to miss it. Don't worry. Plenty of time. Leave it to me. Great. Five. Good morning. Is it just for the two of you? Yes. Can we sit over there by the window? Just a second. Yes, that table's free. Is that a no-smoking area? Yes, we only allow smoking at the bar. Oh, good. Part 3. Shopping Lesson 1. How much are they? Can I help you? Yes, please. How much are the apples? They're £2.10 a kilo, madam. Two kilos, please. Anything else? What about the grapes? How much are they? The black ones are £2.25 a kilo, and the white are £1.75. Very sweet they are. From South Africa. Yes, a kilo of black grapes, then. And four large oranges. Right you are. The large oranges are 40 pence each. Is that OK? Fine, thanks. Now, I just want some flowers. Roses, I think. Yes, a bunch of roses, please. The red or the yellow? Oh, red, please. They're lovely. Right. Twelve beautiful red roses for the lady at £4.50. Is that everything? Yes. That's all, thanks. That's £12.55, madam. £20, thanks. And £7.45 change. Thanks. Have a nice day. Lesson 2 Let's have a takeaway. 1. Golden Dragon, good evening. Hi there. I want to order a takeaway. Yes, sir. Do you want to pick it up or do you want the delivery service? Delivery service, please. And your address? 23, The High Street. You know, it's opposite the pub. Yes, sir. And what do you want to order? Uh, number 43. That's chicken with black bean sauce. And a number 68. Special fried rice. Is that all, sir? No. And a number 21. Sweet and sour pork with noodles. Yes, sir. So it's one number 43, chicken with black bean sauce, one number 21, sweet and sour pork with noodles, and one special fried rice. That's right. How long do you think? About 15 minutes, sir. Great. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye, sir. Two. Hello. Is that pizza to go? Yes, madam. Uh, can I help you? Yes. I want to order some pizzas. Do you have our menu? Yes. I want one with ham and pineapple. That's the Hawaiian, isn't it? And one with just cheese and tomato. The margarita. Do you want thin and crispy or deep pan crust? Thin and crispy, please. So that's one thin and crispy Hawaiian and one thin and crispy margarita. Anything else? No, that's all. OK, then. Your address, please. It's 56 Orchard Avenue, SE21. Thank you, madam. About 20 minutes for delivery and the price is £17, including delivery. Thanks. Lesson 3 Convenience shopping. 1. Excuse me? Yes? Have you got any soft drinks? Yes, on the top shelf, up there. 2. Could I have a newspaper, please? Here you are. 65 pence, please. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. 3. Can I help you? Yes. Have you got any toothpaste? The toothpaste is down there, I think. 
I can't see it. Sorry, we haven't got any then. Four. Do you sell wine? No, sorry, we don't sell alcohol. Do you know where I can buy a bottle of wine? Yes, there's an off licence over the road. Lesson four. Renting a room. What do you think of this one, Matteo? There's a lovely view out of that window. Lovely view of the train station, you mean? It's noisy in here, isn't it? No, not really. I quite like the sound of trains. Not all night, though. I suppose so. However, it is cheap. That's important for us, isn't it? That's true. But do you think it's big enough for both of us? It's only a bedsit, isn't it? There isn't a separate sitting room, and we have to share the kitchen and bathroom. Come on. We have to look at other rooms before we decide. Not a bad bathroom. There's a shower and a bath. Don't you think it looks a bit dirty? Well, it's all the other lodgers who make it dirty. What can you expect? I know. But who cleans it? The landlord? Us, of course. Now, here's the kitchen. Oh, dear. What's the matter, Alex? It's very small. Don't be silly. We don't want a big kitchen. We can't cook. But I like a big kitchen. Still, you're right. We usually eat in the college restaurant, don't we? We don't have time to cook anyway. Too busy working? No, too busy eating in the restaurant and having a good time. Anyway, I think it's OK. We have enough money for the deposit, don't we? I don't know. The deposit is the same as a month's rent, so about £400. Wow. I think I need to call my parents. Oh, Alex, you're impossible. Lesson 5. Hiring a car. I want to hire a car for a couple of days. Have you got anything available? Yes, sir. When is it for? Today. Now, if possible. And for how long? Two days. I want it until Saturday. Fine. Can you return the car here? Yes, I can. What time do you close? About six, but you can leave the keys with security. Great. Now, what sort of car, sir? Anything, really. We have a Ford Fiesta or a Volkswagen Polo at the moment. Fine. Either. Right, sir. We just need to do the paperwork. Could I see your driving licence? Yes, of course. Here it is. I'm sorry, sir, but this is your passport. <gasps> oh, yes. How stupid of me. Oh, dear. I... I don't seem to have my driving licence with me. Must you have it? Yes, sir. I need to see it before I can let you have the car. Of course. May I use your phone? I want to phone my wife to see if my licence is at home. Yes, sir. Here you are. Lesson 6. How do you like to shop? 1. Two kilos of apples, please. The big ones or the small ones, Pet? How much are the big ones? 75 pence a kilo, so that's £1.50 to you, OK? Thanks. And the bananas, how much are they? Two. This model has got a widescreen, teletext, remote control, and, as you can see, a very good picture. And what does it cost? To rent or buy, madam. Oh, I don't know. Well, you can rent it for £17.50 a month, or you can buy it for £765. Of course, if you rent it from us, we will come and repair it for you, or replace it if anything goes wrong. I see. Well, I was going to buy it, but perhaps... Mm, it's a lot of money, so yes, I think I will rent it. Very good, madam. Let me explain the procedure, then. Three. Scottsdales, 
Julie speaking. How can I help you? Hello. Yes, I want to order some things from your catalogue. Could I have your customer reference number, please? It's on the first page of your catalogue. I see. It's 4782XR. Thank you. That's Paul Gallagher of Lee Farm Newmarket, is it? That's right. And what is your first item? It's number 31LR. The table and matching set of four chairs? Yes. And the cost is £450, including special delivery. OK. And your next item? No, no. That's all. Thank you, sir. Can I have your credit card details, please? Yes. The number is 4763... 4. Can I help you? Yes. I want to book a flight to Amsterdam. When do you want to fly? Next Monday, if possible. Let me see. There are seats available on the 7.50 a.m., 9.40 a.m. and 3.15 p.m. from Heathrow. How much? £139 return if you stay Friday and Saturday night. Oh, no. I have to be back on Wednesday. That'll be £189 return, then. Ouch! That sounds a lot. I'm afraid that's the cheapest I can do for you next week. OK. I'll go on the early one, then. The 750. How will you be paying? Plastic, of course. Your credit card details, then, please. Lesson 7. Checking in. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Yes, I have a reservation for tonight. Could I have your name, please? Francois Menton. Is that M-E-N-T-O-N? Yes, that's right. Ah, yes. Mr. Francois Menton. From Canada? Yes, I arrived this afternoon. Welcome to Edinburgh. You're here just for the one night, I see. Yes, I'm going to visit my daughter in Aberdeen tomorrow. She's at the university there. Aberdeen? That's a fine place, but not as grand as Edinburgh. Could I just take your details for the guest registration form? Can I have your address in Canada? It's 1677 Wilson Avenue, Toronto, Ontario, T3L, 1A5. And your telephone number? That's 866-833-9876. So you're Canadian. May I see your passport? Here's my passport. Thank you. And do you have a car with you? No, I don't. Thank you. That's all we need. Here's your room key. You're in room 304 on the third floor. Enjoy your stay. Lesson 8. Making a complaint. 1. Hello, is that reception? This is Nicky Bartlett in room 34. I can't open the minibar. Yes, sir. You will need a special key from reception. There is a small charge for that. 2. Excuse me. I'm in room 506, and the phone isn't working for international calls. Oh, dear. I'll check that for you. What number do you want to phone? 3. Hello. It's room 208. I'm afraid there are no towels in the bathroom. Sorry about that. Someone will bring some immediately. 4. Reception. This is Ken Summers in room 489. I was having a shower and the water went cold. What's going on? Room 489? I'll send someone to fix it right away. 5. Dawn Ellis speaking in room 303. 
I have just got back to my room and it's not ready. Even the bed isn't made. I'm very sorry. We don't usually make up the rooms until after breakfast. Lesson 9 Checking out Good morning. May I help you? I'd like to check out, please. Do you have my bill? It's room 405. Here you are. Could you check it, please? This seems okay. Just a minute. It says I had a double room, but I booked a single. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. We didn't have a single room, so we gave you a double, although we only charged you the single rate. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, and it says I made three telephone calls at 35 euros each. That's not right, because I only made one international call, and that was on the first evening. Don't worry. I'll check that for you. Is there anything else? Well, it doesn't say I used anything from the minibar, although I had three bottles of water. You know, the small size. Oh, we don't charge for water. Great. Well, apart from the calls, I think it's okay. Good. Could you wait while I check with the manager about the call charges, or do you want to sit in the bar? I'll wait here. Oh, and could you order me a taxi to the airport, please? Yes, of course, Miss Pereira. Do you need someone to get your bags? That's all right. I brought them down myself. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your stay with us. I have, very much. Thank you. Perhaps you'll come back another time. I'd love to. Actually, this is one of the best hotels I've stayed in. Thank you. Right. I won't be a moment. Lesson 10 Exchanging Goods Do you need any help? Yes, actually. I bought these jeans last week and they're too small. Oh, that's a pity. Do you want to exchange them or do you want a refund? Have you got a size 12? I think so. Let me see. Yes, here we are. Would you like to try them on? Yes, please. The changing rooms are over there. Thank you. How are the jeans? Fine. They fit really well. Good. Yes, they look very nice on you. So that's just a straight exchange then. Have you got the receipt? Here it is. Thank you. Now, let me put them in a bag for you. Thanks. Lesson 11 Sending things by post Can I help you? Yes, please. I want to send this parcel. I see. Inland or overseas? Oh, overseas. To Australia. I need to weigh it. Here you are. That's 400 grams. And you need to fill in this customs declaration. What do I put here? Well, what's in the parcel? It's a gift for my mother. Just some perfume and other things. So, it's a gift. Tick the box next to gift. I see. And then just say what's in the parcel. So I write perfume and a sweater in here. Yes, that's right. And the value? Well, what do you think it's worth? How much did it all cost? Oh, about £35. OK. Put... Thirty-five pounds in there, then. Is that all? Well, you need stamps. Oh, of course. How much are they? Five pounds and fifty pence. Right. Now stick the stamps on the parcel and leave it with me. Thanks very much. Part 4. People watching. Identifying people. Track 1. 
One. Who's that woman standing by the door? That's Bernadette Jackson. She's my best friend. She works at Brightwell's Bank in the city. Ah, yes, of course. Two. Who are those people by the window? They're my uncle and aunt from Canada. They'd love to hear about your visit to Toronto. Why don't you come and meet them? Sure. Thanks. Three. Oh, hello, Charles. Tell me, who's that boy over there? The tall boy with the long, dark hair. That's my nephew, Stuart. Four. Sarah, hi. And... Oh, Rom. Hello. This is Rita Olsen from Norway. She's a teacher at the academy, and she's staying with us for the summer. Rita, this is my neighbour, Rom. Five. Who's that over there, talking to Samantha? The short woman with red hair. That's my boss, Claire Watkins. Six. This is a lovely photo. Are these your grandchildren, Imogen? No, they're my sister's children. This bigger one is Simon, and the little one with curly hair is Richard. Lesson two. Is this yours? Right. Let's see what we've got. Well, this tie has seen better days. Whose is it? John, is it yours? Uh, no. It's not my tie. It must be Dad's. Yes, it's definitely his. It's one of his horrible ties. And so are those old jeans. No, those are my jeans. They're mine. I don't want to give them away. Bad luck. They're going. Next. Mmm. Whose are these old trainers? Dad's. Dad's. Make sure you wash your hands after touching those, Mum. Are you sure they're his? They're very big. Yeah, definitely. Now, these T-shirts. They're ours. Yeah, they're our T-shirts. Mine's the dark blue one, and Sally's is the light blue one. Right. They can go. What about this skirt? Is it yours, Sally? No, it's not my skirt. Are you sure? Yes, it's definitely not mine. I don't wear skirts like that. It must be yours. Yes, Mum, it's definitely your skirt. Oh, right, I remember now. And this jacket. John, is it yours? My jacket? Certainly not. That's a girl's jacket. Really? Yes, it's hers. It's definitely Sally's jacket. Lesson three. What do they want? I would love the Fergini Python. What a fantastic sounding car. I don't know. It's eight years old, so it's probably not in very good condition. I think the Scaudi Sunset would be the perfect car for us. But it's probably really slow. The Python can go from 0 to 60 in 6 seconds. That's what I call fast. Yes, but it probably uses a lot of petrol and we can't afford that. And look at the price. £12,000 for a second-hand car. No way. What's the problem? We can always sell the house or something. Be sensible, Rob. Look, the Sunset has got a full service history, so it won't break down all the time. Well, I can fix the Python if it breaks down. Hmm. It says that the Sunset is an ideal family car. Yes, but it's probably really boring to drive. In the Python, can you imagine it? Roof down, on the motorway at top speed... Brilliant. It's cars like the Python that cause pollution, you know. 
Lesson four. Comparing people. All right. We've interviewed all three candidates. Who do we think is the best person for the job? They were all good, weren't they? Yes, but I thought that Ms. Lee was more interested in the job than Mr. Tiffany. I agree, and Mr. Hanley was more interested than Ms. Lee. Hmm. What about their experience? Well, Mr. Tiffany has more experience than Mr. Hanley. And experience is very important. Qualifications? They are all really well qualified for the job. Both Mr. Tiffany and Mr. Hanley have all the right qualifications, but not as many as Miss Lee. Mr. Tiffany is a bit older than the others, isn't he? Yes, but I don't think that age is too important. No, experience and qualifications are more important. And languages, of course. Who do you think speaks the best French? Hmm. Mr. Tiffany doesn't speak it as well as Mr. Hanley. But Mr. Tiffany speaks more languages, doesn't he? Oh yes, Mr. Hanley and Ms. Lee don't speak as many languages, but I think quality is more important than quantity. Hmm, possibly. Okay, so who do you think is the best person for the job? In my opinion. Lesson five. What are they doing? Track one. Ah, Doreen, I need some help with these invoices. Can you help? Sorry, Mr. Mella, I'm typing some letters for Mr. Willis. Where's Simon then? Um, he's on the phone. He's talking to the Singapore office. Never mind. What about Janet? She's having a meeting with the catering staff. Oh dear. Is Polly around then? I'm afraid not. She's working at home today. She should be back tomorrow. It's not my lucky day today. Ian? He's doing some shopping. You know, buying things for the office. Rob? He's showing Helen how to use the new computer. Mm. Rick? He's fixing his car. A small problem with the exhaust pipe. Joanne? It's her break. She's eating her lunch in the park. But it's raining. Is it? Oh yes, so it is. <sighs> Never mind. I'll come back later. All right, Mr. Meller. Okay, everybody. He's gone. You can come out of the stock room now. Thanks, Doreen. Oh, cheers. Thanks a lot. We thought he'd never go. <laughs> Track two. All right, everyone. Let's get started. Um, Polly, are you listening? Yes, Mr. Meller. Then stop talking to Doreen, please. Now, the first thing we need to. Simon, where are you going? Sorry, Mr. Meller, I've just remembered. I've left my phone in my office. Well, get it later. Now, as I was saying, we really need to. Rob, what are you reading? Oh, sorry, it's an email from my wife. She wants me to buy some bread on my way home. I'm really not interested in your shopping list, Rob. Pay attention, please. Now. The first thing we need, uh, uh, Rick. Why are you looking out of the window? Oh,、uh, no reason, Mr. Meller. No, come on, Rick. What are you looking at? There are some teenagers outside in the car park. Come on then, Rick. What are they doing? They're trying to steal your car. What? I, quick, 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 everybody out! This will be funny. Quick, come on, go and find my car. Lesson six. Personalities. Track one. Ben's the early bird in our flat. He gets up at six a.m. even at weekends, and he always goes running in the park before breakfast. What about Danny? Danny's just the opposite. 
he's rather lazy, and spends most of his time in front of the TV. He doesn't go out much. A bit of a couch potato, then? Yes, exactly. And then there's Frank. He just loves meeting people. He's very talkative, and he's out almost every night. A real party animal. Track 2 1. He's really ambitious. He wants to be president one day. 2. She's quite adventurous. She likes travelling to faraway places. 3. She's so polite. She always says please and thank you. 4. They're very cheerful. I don't think I've ever seen them look unhappy or bad-tempered. 5. My nephew is a bit spoiled. His parents buy him too many toys. 6. My sister is so talkative. It's very difficult to have a short conversation with her. 7. My father is very impatient. He hates waiting. 8. I remember Sharon. She was very popular at school. Everyone wanted to be her friend. Lesson 7. What was it like? Hi, Janice. Robert, great to see you. Hi, Alan. Alan, hello. How was your holiday? Terrible. Terrible. Oh, dear. Sorry to hear that. What happened? Well, remember we told you that we were going to the Royal Palms Hotel in Baratoga? Uh-huh. It looked really nice in the advertisement. That's what we thought. Until we got there. And wasn't it? It certainly was not. Take the bedrooms for a start. The advertisement said that they were huge. And luxurious. What a joke. Ours was tiny. There was just enough room for a bed. And the beds were too hard. We slept really badly every night. And then there was the restaurant. Not good. Not good? It was terrible. The service was OK, but the food tasted disgusting. And it was the same thing every day. Chicken, potatoes, peas. Chicken, potatoes, peas. Well, at least you had a nice beach to relax on. Oh, no, we didn't. We certainly did not. What do you mean? The beach was disgusting. It was really dirty. Rubbish all over the place. Dead fish. Ugh. And even if we wanted to sit on it, we couldn't. Why not? Because it rained every day. The hotel didn't tell us it was the rainy season before we went. And don't get me started on the pool. Olympic-sized, wasn't it? Olympic-sized? Ha! <laughs> Bath-sized, more like. If there were more than three people in it, you couldn't move. And then, of course, there were the friendly staff. They were so rude. They treated us like we were in prison. One of them even shouted at us when we left our bedroom lights on one evening. Whatever you do, Alan, don't go there. Hmm. Sounds terrible. Think I'll give it a miss. Are you going to complain? We certainly are, and we want our money back. Lesson 8 Then and Now I have with me in the studio Charlie Rickman, the man who made and then lost over £65 million. Charlie, hello. Hello there. 
65 million pounds. That's quite a loss. How did it all go so wrong? Well, my internet company, Rickman.com Limited, was doing well. Sales were good, and I was making more money than I could spend. By the time I was 21, I was already a millionaire. Five years later, I decided to hand over the running of the company to my brother. Raymond? Right. That was a big mistake. He managed everything very badly. We had lots of competition from other companies and, well, that was it. And now you're working 12 hours a day in a supermarket, filling shelves and helping customers. You must have had quite a change of lifestyle. Your house, for example? Right. I used to live in a huge house. Sixteen bedrooms, swimming pool, tennis courts, and so on. Now I live in a caravan in my mother's garden. And presumably you don't get out much. Unfortunately, no. I used to enjoy eating in restaurants almost every night. But now I cook my own meals. And nothing fancy, either. When things were going well, I used to eat lobster and drink champagne. Not anymore. Now it's toast and a cup of tea, if I'm lucky. Ouch! Well, welcome back to the real world. What about your free time? Well, to be honest, I don't get much free time. In the past, I used to watch a lot of television. But now I can't even afford the television licence. These days, I read a lot instead. I can get books free from the library. And, of course, I used to spend hours every day talking to my friends on the phone. Now I can't afford the phone bills, so I write to them instead. Mind you, I don't seem to have many friends left. Nobody wants to know you when you don't have any money. Did you find it difficult starting work again? Oh, yes. I used to take it easy and relax as much as possible. Now I work up to 12 hours a day. Well, thank you for coming to talk to us, Charlie. You're welcome. Hey, any chance of 50 pence for a cup of tea? Lesson 9 Party People Track 1 Would you like a cigarette? Not for me, thanks. I used to smoke, but I gave up last year. What about a glass of wine? No, thanks. I used to drink, but my doctor told me to stop. Perhaps a cup of coffee instead? No, thank you. I used to drink coffee, but it stops me sleeping. Well, would you like to try one of these chicken pieces? Uh, no. I used to eat meat, but now I'm a vegetarian. Um, I see. Would you like to dance, then? No, thank you. I used to dance, but I hurt my leg in a skiing accident. Aha. Uh -huh. What about singing some karaoke? Yes. Great idea. I used to be very shy, but now I love singing in public. Track 2 Who's that over there, by the door? Brian Clack. He's my cousin. Why do you ask? Well, I just found these keys on the floor. I think he dropped them. Did you prepare all this food yourself? Most of it, yes. But I bought quite a lot ready prepared from that new supermarket that has just opened down the road. Hmm. Well, you've done a great job. Thanks. 
These little pastries are delicious. Have you tried one? Not yet. Mmm. You're right. They aren't bad, are they? Well, I'd better give these keys back to Brian. See you later. Track 3 Hi. What's your name? Oh, hi. My name's Steve. What's your name? I'm Jenny. Have you come to England for a holiday? No. I'm here on business. My company has an office not far from here. Are you on your own? No. I'm with my wife. She's over there. Is she the tall woman with the long hair? That's her. Are you here on your own? No. I'm with my husband. He's that man with the blue jacket over there. When did you arrive in England? We arrived two days ago. I see. And how long are you here altogether? Just a week. I hope you have a great time. Part 5. Attention. Lesson 1. Giving orders and making requests. Good morning, sir. Could you show me your ticket and boarding pass, please? Here you are. Thank you. Please put your bag on the table. Have you just got one piece of hand baggage? Yes. Fine. Would you mind opening the bag for me? Of course. Right. This camera. Is it yours? Yes, it is. Is there any film in it at the moment? Uh, no. Good. Would you open the back for me, please? OK. See? Empty. That's fine, sir. Thank you. Are you carrying any metal objects on you? Yes. My keys and a lighter. They're in my jacket pocket. Would you mind putting them in the tray, please? And then walk through the metal detector. There you go. Thank you. Everything seems fine. Thank you for your time, sir. Have a nice flight. Lesson 2 Following and giving instructions. Oh, hi, Judy. Can I ask you for a favour? What's that, Tom? I need to give a presentation to the directors tomorrow, and I need a CD player. I don't suppose I could borrow yours, could I? Well, all right. I keep it under my desk. Here you are. Great. Thanks a lot. Uh. How do I use it? You don't know how to use a CD player? Um, well, you know, uh... OK, it's really quite easy. First of all, you plug it in. Put the plug in the socket. There's one next to my computer. OK. Done it. Now what? You turn it on, of course. How do I do that? Press the power button on the top of the machine. This one here, on the left. Right. And then? Open the CD tray. How do I do that? Press the lid gently and it opens. See? Yes. OK. Right. When you've done that, Put your CD in. Have you got it with you? Yeah. Here it is. All right. Put the CD in. Then close the tray. Just push the lid down gently. All right. And how do I play it? Press the play button. The one on the right. Like this? Uh-huh. Oh, 
can't hear anything. You need to adjust the volume. Turn the volume control to the right. To stop the CD, press the stop button. That's this one. Easy. Thanks a lot, Judy. I'll return it tomorrow. No problem. Just be careful with it, that's all. Lesson 3 Giving Advice So, Ron, off on holiday tomorrow. You must be excited. Well, nervous, really. I've never been on an aeroplane before. It's a whole new experience for me. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. Flying's supposed to be one of the safest forms of travel. But let me give you a bit of advice. OK. First of all, wear loose, comfortable clothing, especially if it's a long flight. Your body gets bigger in an aircraft, so you need a bit of room to expand. You're joking. No, I'm quite serious. Secondly, take a good book to read. Flying can be very boring, and the films they show on aircraft are usually rubbish. Good book. OK. Arrive at the airport early and check in as soon as you get there. That way you can choose a good seat and then have some time to relax. Ask for a seat near the front of the aircraft. Why? Because it's quieter there. You're not so close to the engines. Now, before you get on the aircraft, eat a light meal, a sandwich or something. Airline food is usually pretty bad. OK. During the flight itself, drink plenty of water and avoid alcohol. Your body loses water in an aircraft, so you need to replace it. Oh, and if it's possible, walk around the cabin occasionally. Stretch your legs. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Lesson 4 Giving Advice 1. This jacket is really old. That's true. You should get a new one. 2. I've got a terrible headache. I'm not surprised. You spend too long on your computer. 3. I'm tired all the time. Of course you are. You work too hard. 4. Call the police! Someone's stolen my wallet! Calm down. Maybe you left it in the restaurant. Why don't you call them first? 5. I think it might rain. It is getting very cloudy. You should take an umbrella with you. 6. I never seem to have any money. Is it any wonder you spend it all on CDs? 7. What time do trains for Boston leave? I've no idea. How about calling the station to find out? 8. I hate this terrible weather. In that case, how about moving to a warmer country? Lesson 5 Talking about obligation Track 1 This is our latest mobile phone. It's a great little phone, but you need to look after it. I see. First of all, you mustn't use it in petrol stations or on aeroplanes. Apparently, it can be quite dangerous. You mustn't drop it, as it will break quite easily. And you mustn't use it in a wet or very hot environment. On the beach, for example, or in the bath. Hmm. 
You must keep it in its cover at all times. That stops it from getting dirty. And you must charge it up every day. Otherwise, you might be cut off in the middle of a conversation. The good news is that it has its own internal power source, so you don't have to buy new batteries for it. Oh, and the mouthpiece is very sensitive, so you don't have to talk too loudly into it. You must turn it off after you've used it. This model emits a lot of radiation, which can be dangerous if you carry it around switched on all day. Oh, and one final thing. For the same reason, you mustn't use it for more than ten minutes at a time. Oh dear. Have you got anything safer? Like a carrier pigeon, for example? Track 2 Good to see you, Peter. Welcome to Multitech Systems. Thank you. Now, before you get started and meet the others here, I must tell you about a few company rules, OK? OK. First of all, we begin work at nine o'clock every day. But you have to be here at half past eight on Monday mornings because we have a meeting to talk about the week ahead. All right. Do I have to come early on any other days? No, just Monday. The working day ends at five o'clock. You mustn't leave earlier than that without asking me first. Is that clear? Uh-huh. You have one hour for lunch, and there's a restaurant on the second floor. Although, of course, you don't have to eat there if you don't want to. In fact, many of our employees go out for lunch. But you must make sure you're back in the office by two o'clock. All right. Now, the office equipment. There's a photocopier, which everybody can use, but you have to have a special code number to operate it. Yours is 3865. All right? 3865. Right. If you have any problems with the machine, see me. You mustn't try to fix it on your own. I wouldn't dream of it. Is there anywhere I can get a coffee? Yes, there's a coffee machine in the hall. Do I have to pay for it? No, it's free. You don't have to pay anything for hot drinks. There's also a facility... Lesson 6 Saying how to do things Track 1 Hello and welcome to today's edition of Move On, Move Up. Now, interviews. Love them or hate them, you can't avoid them. And to point you in the right direction, I have in the studio Mark Alton, manager of All Cell Estates. Hello, Mark. Hello, Sandy. Now, Mark, I understand that over the last five years, you have interviewed more than 200 people for positions in your company. That's right. Some good, some, well, not so good. So, what, in your opinion, is the secret of a successful job interview? It's nothing complicated, really. First of all, dress well. Put on the smartest clothes you have. Secondly, be prepared. Think carefully about what you're going to say before the interview. Find out as much as possible about the company and make a list of questions you want to ask. And on the big day, make sure you arrive on time. Of course. It's fine to arrive on time or even to arrive a little early. But whatever you do, don't arrive late. You don't want to seem unreliable. What about during the interview itself? Don't speak too slowly 
or too quickly. Take your time, but don't send the interviewer to sleep. Speak clearly. Don't mumble or cover your mouth. And don't try too hard to impress the interviewer. This can create a negative impression. But what if things don't go your way? Well, if you think things are going badly, don't panic. Act calmly and continue to answer any questions to the best of your ability. Try to stay in control. Sometimes things aren't as bad as they seem. Mark Alton, thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. Now, to that essential question that everybody wants to know. Lesson 7 Talking about quantity. 1. We'd love to help you, but unfortunately, we haven't got much time before our train leaves. 2. You should visit London when you are in England. There are a lot of good museums that I would recommend. 3. I enjoy a good social life. I have some really good friends. 4. My social life isn't great. I don't have many friends. 5. We'll have to go to a restaurant for dinner. There isn't much food in the house. 6. Let's eat at home tonight. There's lots of food in the house. Lesson 8 Making suggestions and talking about probability A I'm late. I'm going to miss my bus. If you run, you might catch it. B I've got a terrible headache. If you take a couple of aspirin, it should get better. C. This plant doesn't look very healthy. If you give it some water, it should revive. D. The computer isn't working again. If you call an engineer, he might fix it for you. E. Poor Fido doesn't look very well. If you take him to the vet, he should be all right. Lesson 9 Describing something that is happening now. Morning, Dolores. Oh, good morning, Mr Meller. Is Miss Edwards in her office? Yes, but you can't see her at the moment. She's being interviewed by someone from the local radio station. Right. Well, when she's finished, could you ask her to come and see me in my office? Oh, you can't use your office today, I'm afraid. I can't? Why not? Didn't anyone tell you? It's being decorated. Oh, great. Well, in that case, I'll be in room 17. Sorry, Mr Meller. Some new furniture is being put in. All right. What about room 21? It's being used by Mr Walton. It's not my lucky day, is it? Room 28? Uh, sorry. A new computer is being installed. This isn't very good, is it? Room 35? Um, not there either. The windows are being cleaned. But they won't take long. Oh, well. In that case, I might as well sit here with you and have a coffee. Sorry, Mr Meller. There's no coffee. The machine broke yesterday and it's being repaired. All right. I'll go and sit in my car for half an hour. Not possible either, I'm afraid. Why on earth not? From where I'm sitting, I can see your car. So? Like you said, it isn't your lucky day. 
You parked it on a double yellow line. It's being removed by the police. Oh! Lesson 10 Tell me about them. So, what do they do, these people? Well, Susanna's the boss. To be honest, I'm a bit frightened of her. Frightened of her? Why? It's her whole manner, you know, the way she behaves. I mean, she's always satisfied with my work and everything. And we have a lot in common, but she's so serious about her job. And she's not very friendly. What about the others? Molly, for example. Molly is our personnel manager. She's responsible for taking on new employees or getting rid of those who aren't doing a very good job. She's never late for work and always notices if we are late. Now, John... The good-looking one? Yes, the good-looking one. He's our sales manager. He's good at his job, but he's often absent from the office because he travels a lot. And Brendan, isn't it? I must admit, I'm quite fond of Brendan. He's our office messenger. He doesn't earn much, so he's always short of cash. He's also famous for falling asleep at his desk after lunch. <laughs> what about... Thomas. Our accountant. He's OK, I suppose. Totally different from everyone else in his approach to work. Gets in at seven o'clock, works for 14 hours. Sometimes even sleeps at the office. Sounds a bit sad. A bit mad, actually. Part six, tell me about it. Lesson 1. Asking about past events. 1. Morning, Sam. Morning, Ben. Sorry, but can you lend me some cash for my train ticket? Did you spend all your money last night? Yes, I did. I had to get a taxi home. OK, then. Here you are. Thanks. I can go to the bank at lunchtime and pay you back tonight. Fine. But don't forget... Two. I've had a terrible day. The train was delayed and it was so full I had to stand all the way into town. Oh, dear. Were you late for work? No, I wasn't. But I wanted to get to the office early, to prepare for the sales meeting. Did it go OK? No, it was terrible. My computer didn't work properly, so my presentation was all mixed up, and I spilt coffee all over my notes. Not your lucky day, then. No, it wasn't. Lesson 2. What were they doing? Right, madam. In your own words, tell me what happened. OK. Well, I was watching a man standing by the side of the road. Can you describe him? Yes. He was tall, with long, dark hair. He was wearing a jacket and a tie. Anything else? Yes. He was also wearing a pair of glasses. Sunglasses? No, ordinary glasses. Spectacles. And was he holding anything? Yes. He was holding a suitcase. Was he wearing a hat? No, he wasn't. Can you tell me anything else? He was looking at a map. What made you suspicious? 
Well, I thought it was a bit strange because he was... Lesson three. Telling a story. Track one. One. I asked the cashier what the rate was and then gave her my dollars. Suddenly, a man came in, pointed a gun at her and demanded five thousand pounds. I just didn't know what to do. Two. Before I was able to save everything to the disc, the screen went blank, and then a box appeared saying I had performed an illegal operation. The whole thing then stopped working. Can you believe it? Three. I was winning. I really was, but Jane said she didn't want to get wet and decided to go inside. I think she's just a bad loser. 4. I had just put the oven on and was cutting up some tomatoes when Tom called to say he was coming round. He chooses his moments, doesn't he? Five. I came down the slope at about 50 kilometres an hour. Then I lost my balance, lost control and hit a tree. Ouch! I spent the next week in hospital. Six. It was a beautiful old building. I had just pointed my camera at it when a policeman walked up to me and told me to put it away. Apparently, it was a military building. Track 2 Can I help you, sir? Yes. I'm afraid I'm not really happy with this hotel. I'm sorry to hear that. Can I have your name and room number, please? Yes, of course. It's Charles Cook, and I'm in room 406. Right, Mr. Cook. Now, what's the problem exactly? Where shall I start? Well, first of all, the service in your restaurant was slow. And then, while I was eating my dinner, one of your waiters spilt soup on my shirt. He didn't apologise, and the restaurant manager didn't seem to think it was important. One of my best shirts was ruined. That's not at all acceptable, sir. I'll have a word with the manager later. Anything else? Well, the food in the restaurant was very nice, you know. Nothing amazing, but I would certainly eat there again. However, an apology and an offer to clean my shirt would have been nice. Oh, I agree. I'll see what I can do. Thanks. Next, I was trying to sleep in the afternoon when the maid came in and started to clean my room. Did you ask her to leave? Of course I did. But she said she had to clean the room or she'd be in trouble. I mean... It was four o'clock in the afternoon. She also forgot to leave clean towels. Hmm, that's not good enough. How is your room? Oh, wonderful. One of the nicest rooms I've been in. But I'm not here to compliment you on your rooms. Of course not, sir. Anything else? Yes, I ordered a meal to be brought to my room. It took almost an hour to arrive, and when it did, it was cold. Also, the waiter brought it in while I was taking a shower. He actually came into the bathroom to tell me the food had arrived. Right. I'll look into that as well. One final thing. 
I was using one of the computers in your business centre when it crashed. I was in the middle of writing a report, and I lost everything. Also, the printer doesn't work, and the internet connection is really slow. It took me ten minutes to get online. Yes, we have had a few complaints about that. I'll see what I can do and get back to you. Thank you. You've been very helpful. Lesson four. What did you do next? Yesterday, I had a really busy day. First of all, I walked to the supermarket to get some food. Then I went back home and phoned my friend Bruce. After that, I had some lunch. Next, I drove to Bruce's house to pick him up. The traffic was bad, but we eventually got to the cinema. We saw the latest Matrix film, which was pretty good. Next, we went for a coffee and a chat. I finally got to bed at about midnight. Lesson five. Talking about obligation. One. You shouldn't have eaten that chicken. It wasn't completely cooked. Two. We should have left earlier. Now we'll be late. Three. I didn't meet you yesterday because I had to work overtime. Four. We shouldn't have spent so much money in the restaurant. Now we can't afford to get a taxi home. Five. You didn't have to take a taxi to the city centre. There's a cheap, reliable bus service. Six. You should have told your boss you would be late. He's really angry. Lesson six. Famous lives. Charlie Chaplin was born as Charles Spencer Chaplin in London on the sixteenth of April, eighteen eighty-nine. Before he became a star, Chaplin acted on the stage in London. He went to the USA with a traveling show and was discovered. By the film producer Mac Sennett, in 1914 he began to direct his own films. During his time in Hollywood, Chaplin acted in many films. He developed a much-loved character who wore baggy trousers, a small coat, large shoes, and a black bowler hat. His most successful films included. The Tramp, 1915; The Gold Rush, 1925; City Lights, 1931; and Modern Times, 1936. Chaplin became very rich, and eventually he became famous all over the world. After forty years in the film business. Chaplin got into trouble with the U.S. government of the early 1950s. They did not like his political ideas. He went to London in 1952, and was not allowed to return to Hollywood. After this, Chaplin decided to live in Switzerland. He went back to the U.S.A. once only in 1972. To collect an Oscar at the Academy Awards ceremony, he finally died in 1977 in Switzerland. Lesson seven: Promises and resolutions. 
January the first again, and I've decided to make a few resolutions. Let's hope I can keep them this year. First of all, I want to give up smoking. It's bad for my health. Next, I need to set up a regular time to go to the gym. I'm getting too fat. And I'm going to listen to my boss when he talks about time management, even though I find this very boring. Then I want to look after the car so it doesn't break down so often. And finally, I want to pay back the money I borrowed from my brother. I borrowed it last year. And I haven't paid it back yet.